All right, sound check. All right, sound check. Sound check success. All right. Uh, hello. Welcome to the stream for Sunday's mega drop reset of all of the glorious things in this glorious, glorious fairy tale game. Um, and uh, to my vague attempt to stream things, um, starting with this game, my daily play um, that I enjoy very, very much. And uh, uh, it's a mobile game. It's a lot of lovely little fairy tale warriors that you collect and power up and buff up and um, reposition in assorted little battles against uh, evil versions of themselves. Um, it's pretty awesome. Um, streaming a little later than I intended today uh, for the Mega Drop because actually the the game rebooted about an hour an hour ago, um, but I made the delightful mistake this morning, much, much earlier this morning, of uh, saying, ooh, yes, I will watch Jurassic Park Dominion when my TV prompted that as a recommendation. I hadn't yet seen it. And uh, it was a bajillion hours long, but far more dorkily, nostalgically um, enjoyable than I could have anticipated. So while it was not the tip-top most amazing movie, I... Uh, it was still really great, um, and it just finished, and so now I am back to my regularly scheduled program. Um, I also utterly failed at uh, the beach this morning. It had been my original intent, um, or at least earlier this week, that that was my thought. I would go to the beach, I would come back, I would stream and play my games and, and kind of chill out, um, but uh, earlier in the week, I, uh, I tried to do another beach, an earlier beach day. And the traffic, the traffic was so intense. So it uh, was already pretty hopping really, really early this morning. So gave up, retreated back to the couch, hung out with some dinosaurs. And now we're here checking out uh, the excitement that is some quick admin to run the game um, and to get all the power-ups. Currently in the Legends Championship, uh, I won the final the final bets. MBXL did indeed make it through. Congratulations to MBXL, whosoever you may be, wheresoever in the world. Uh, you rock. And I think that was your third or fourth week winning that. So that's pretty awesome. I'm just going to send out my heroes on some AFK quests so that the next time I come into the game, they have collected lots of lovely, snazzy things for me. And then here, here, my friends, is the utter delight of Sundays in AFK arena. Not only has all have all of the menus reset for all of the daily quests and for the weekly quests um, and for a couple of other sort of big drops, but every tower is open in the King's tower. Um, which means that though I am totally stuck in the King's tower, I can't make it past 524. Um, although right now I'm definitely not going to make it past because I'm missing a whole player. Let's try that again, um, because I do have to play this at least once today in order to tick off an item from my quest list. Let's give them another wizard and power up. So Citrana that I've just added there, my little I dream of Jeannie Fox, this one, she is the companion to my primary warrior on Tandra. Um, and with their powers combined, they they boost each other. But in addition to that, you'll see I have three of those gold coin warriors over there. Those are Maulers. Um, so because I have three from that same faction and then my other two, my sorcerers up here are both dimensionals with that sort of crystal diamond, I get all of the benefits from the little steamed glass thing. So my, um, what does that mean? Validating. So I get plus 15% and plus 15% for both attack and health, which is magical. Um, and, uh, let's see what that does. Again, it's three, three wizards, one tank, one warrior. Um, opposite against they have majority warriors and tanks on their side um, and are several levels above me um, so I don't think this is going to go well for all uh, Antandra occasionally can, can t totally totally carry a battle like this on her own but given that I've been having trouble with these guys for several days I'm not sure she can 
I'm hopeful. Oh, especially since she's down to just Nara and Thoron and just Thoron's going to bounce back. She's 30 seconds. If she can take out these two in the next 20 seconds, then she's got this. Thoron's already bounced back once. Oh, holy fuck. Well done. See, this is why she is a glorious goddess. Look at that. Look at that. She rocks. She's my biggest power up to date. Um, she has uh, all of her engravings done and all of her furniture in the inn, which to non-players will sound completely like gobbledygook. Um, but I promise you uh, there's a method to that madness. Each little piece of these different in-game currencies that you collect and contribute to your to your character boosts different effect, attack and defense and health ratings. And eventually um, powers them up enormously. And it's it's very exciting when you get one super powered up. I mean, I've been playing for 13 months in this game. 13 months in this game. And Entendre to date is still my only super, super powered character. Um, but when she can carry a full battle like that, where all of her companions are done and she just keeps going, it's just awesome. Um, okay, so... King's Tower, I made some progress. I'm up one more floor. That's fantastic. Um, but with all the other floors open, this is when there's some battle fun to be had. Um, so I'm going to start with the Forsaken Necropolis since it's at 260. And the goal, my goal with the towers is usually to end on a zero or a five because it, like, so for instance, 260, if I beat this battle, I get a slightly larger treasure drop. Um, and at 265, again, slightly larger treasure drop. One of those drops alternating is a drop of um, pardon me because I'm, I'm so bad at the actual official names, but the uh, crystal ball cards. And the crystal ball cards can be used with the, the fortune teller in the, the tavern that you claim people cards. And there's some very specific people um, that you have a better shot of getting from that draw than from a regular pull. And uh, as I said, Entendre is my only fully, fully, fully powered up character I have many on the pathway to that, but uh, still so many to go, essentially, that aren't even on the pathway, including the new characters. Okay, so 260. I don't think I'm going much farther there. Uh, let's give the Wilders a shot and see if we can get 246 uh, past us. These are all of my top characters. I might be able to switch out the for my walking tree, my Ent. I love that there's an Ent in here. Um, but, uh, we'll see if they can carry the day, uh, Lucius, the grave, uh, not the, the light bearer warrior in the front is doing some really solid defense on top of this little guy with the gun and the guy above him with the coffin are both usually really good at giving their other characters energy and holding them, which is dangerous. Uh, so my guys are not making a great dent, but they weren't dying. Oh, well, that's. Spoke too soon. I was like, they weren't dying though because I have no more Antazi on their healing and, and boosting their energy, but uh, I spoke too soon because there they went. So it's down to my mermaid and fairy. Can they carry the day? I don't know. Tazi has surprised me before. There's definitely been one or two situations where it looked very dire and somehow she carried the day, but no. Okay, so we're not going much farther in that tower today. Sadness. Really not rocking the tower pushes. Let's try the Infernal Fortress. This is the Hypogean Tower um, for the sort of demonic class players. And I recently got uh, an Ascended Aziz guy, uh, which is this little sort of tenderly dude in the bottom left corner. Um, his Nightmare Realm power when he pops is one of the most glorious pieces of artwork in the game. Let's see if he gets there. It should be happening in five, four, three, two, and pop. Um, and I love just this backdrop. It's so beautiful. Um, having said that, again, on the fence as to whether Aziz and Mahira can carry this alone. And um, Mahira is my strongest type of GN, but even then, uh, Grizul, who's out there, will be able to pop his little gremlins. There they came. So where she was down to just three, it became five. So no progress. Okay, so possibly my singular progress in the tower this weekend will be the one floor of the King's Tower, but let's give it <laughs> let's give it the college try. Let's double check the last ones. Uh, here's the Mahler Tower. Again, because uh, uh, Entendre is here. 
fully, 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 fully pumped up. Um, she tends to dominate uh, her, her tower tends to move a little farther faster than the other ones. I've also had some Brutus here for a really long time. Um, he was one of the other ones that I've, I've at least got to the silver frame with five stars pretty early or not pretty early, but earliest in my, my timeline. Um, so there's a chance they might be able to move this one a little farther, faster. Uh, even if they kill who they have, they have Rowan and Rosie, but Thorin is going to have to die twice. I love, I love when my Thorin is on the field and, he he oops they think they've killed him everybody wanders off and then he pops back but it's so frustrating when you're in the opposite side okay cool so we moved the maulers along at least one as well let's give their next floor another shot 277 i'm leaving my formation as is because i have my two tanky guys out there uh to begin with uh i might if this one doesn't go through i might rearrange where alara was the the sort of scarecrow lizard um, because I left him um, up in the middle, and there's a possibility that he might be more useful against Mahira distracting her, but it doesn't move point because they carried it. Okay, here we go, 278. Maybe, just maybe. I can pop up. Um, Again, I want to do a little bit of distracting, so I'm going to put Alara opposite uh, Scorpion Lady over there and see if she'll want to keep fussing at his scarecrow up in the corner and keep her up at the top instead of having her run diagonal down across the board and distract the other fights, which thus far she's she's staying up there, so that's good. That they are giving Granite a right mauling. Um, though at the very least with everybody on my side clustered down below, they've at least managed to kill everybody down there and then they made it to the farther characters. Awesome. All right. Um, ooh, we have some, some hold characters. I wonder if Alaro against Nara. So Nara here is going to drag, use that harpoon to drag across. If Alaro is there with his distraction power, does she drag Alaro or does she drag his Scarecrow and get confused? Let's see. Also, Brutus against the twins. Oh, she didn't. Ah, see, she didn't even go after Alaro. She deviated and pulled Brutus, presumably because Alaro confused her. So that's interesting. I didn't know. I wonder if it's always that trajectory. Like she goes to the next, the next diagonal up, um, if that's the case. And what that would mean in, in being able to distract her. Um, it would be interesting to, to to do that to her, but then to have Taylene in the slot that she pulls from. Um, Taylene is another glorious goddess character. Um, and she, uh, similar to Thorin, dies and then revives, um, but repeatedly, not just once. And so... Nara can kill her, but then and then get distracted by someone else. But then she pops up again, and she AOE's everybody with like a massive fire blast. Um, there's two versions of her in the game: the original Taylene, and then the sort of fancy Taylene. And I've been uh, slowly, ever so slowly, working my way up to getting the fancy Taylene because uh, her cards are really, really rare. And I, I, to be honest, I think I'm lucky. I've gotten as many as I have in the random draws, and I was able to utilize that to, to jump off to, uh, then start focusing on her. Yes. Okay. Cool. So we got a decent reward there. That's a 90 purple. So that's at least one decent purple card, um, from the draw. So we'll move on towers. Okay. So some progress in the King's Tower. Some progress in the Brutal Citadel. Let's try the Light Bearer Tower. Um, ooh, this will be a dangerous one because uh, the opposite, the opposing team, all of these guys, four out of five are grave bearers, and they basically have an instant. There's this lovely little chart here. Basically, a grave bearer to a light, a light bearer. Or no, sorry, a grave born to a light born. I'm just botching the little bit. A grave born to a light bearer. Um gets a bonus, essentially. So they're just a smidge stronger than I would want them to be. I might put Peggy down here. She's going to pop a bunch of soldiers. Um, 
and at the very least guard Belinda. Nara up at the top is going to pull Lucius. There he goes. Um, but he might be able to hold out defense enough. Never mind. Nope, he's down. He's he actually was one of the early characters I I drew and has never been a favorite. Not enough to prioritize him in in the power ups. And maybe he's more useful later on in the game, or maybe he was useful in the early game and I just missed that part. I'm not sure. Um, but I think my guys will get this one. Chichilia is working on Baden. Baden's shadow minions up there. Peggy and Belinda are still running around, and yeah, they've got it. Okay, cool. Another major purple drop. That's what we were after, so we'll move on. Final tower for battles today uh, in the King's Tower, but not in, in the daily drop from Sunday's Magnificent Games. Uh, thanks, Greg, but uh, hardly, hardly. Um, but thank you, but no. Um, but again, trying, trying. Uh, you missed my earlier commentary on, uh, or I mean, maybe you were here. I don't know. Did you did you see Jurassic Park Dominion? I just watched it this morning, and so I'd, I'd actually horribly set the schedule, being like, I'm gonna stream at 11 a.m. my time, and then didn't start streaming until 12, um, because it was just it was such a long movie, but also way better than I expected. It was just so delightfully chock full of nostalgia. Even the obnoxious music cues when when all the original characters met the new characters um, couldn't couldn't entirely deflate the I don't know the '90s joy, the appreciation. All right, six. That did not go well. Is there anything I can do? Let me see. So I recently got. Um, Wu Tan here to the silver frame, which is exciting because that's my first of these. Um, shit, what is it? celestials uh, that are up and running? And with the silver frame, as you can see, there's my fan. This is my fancy Taylene that I was just raving about. She's awesome, but she's several away from from getting up to the next uh, push. She's best in the back line. Laura's best in the back line, though maybe moving her against Taz here, who is going to run out into the field, but Flora's going to fly above the battle, so she might confuse Kaz, which would be useful. And in the meantime, I might switch Alna and Wu Tan. Wu Tan's going to multiply against whoever he's going with. Um, and I think Alna's pretty straightforward warrior, warrioress, I suppose, but I haven't really utilized her very much. I've only just recently acquired her essentially um and if this version doesn't work out this layout i might put in the celestial archer um because i forgot i had her i would love to see her more powered up and ready to go um but again these are just some of the harder cards to get um which is why it's so essential to to be collecting all the different currencies that will lead up to the card drops but not paying for them I draw, I, or I tell myself I draw the line. I have put money into this game. I shouldn't have, but um, success. Okay, so that did work out. Let's see if I can get this to 130. Um, let's put Flora opposite their medicine man, Silas, here and see if maybe some distraction will happen. Meanwhile, that bunny-eared guy is going to do an energy strand and connect two of my characters, who will therefore be, essentially, if one of them is losing energy, the other one will lose energy as well, correspondingly. So you can see he did uh, Utan and Alna in the front line has connected them together, but he's about to die, which is great, um, because my my sort of astrological celestial back there has sent, sent out that moon orb, that purple ball, the opposite end of the battlefield and that's like life leeching them away I think I think that's what's happening uh she Moriel is is also one of my newer ones for the dimensionals and hypogeans I'm only just getting my head wrapped around them they're sort of you don't really get them until later game thank you Alfred yeah so this is this is actually one of the reasons why I've ended up streaming this particular game because right now what I'm doing is I'm on Streamlabs, but on mobile. So it's streaming from my phone as opposed to my PC. And so the the hideous IT hilarity 
of, of the other day was an attempt to do PC. Um, and the second thing is I think I'm going to have to go through similar IT, like just step by step hashing it out until I get it, not just for um, PC, but I also wanted to stream Switch. And I, I, I have a worry that that will also mess around with the audio. And also from my um, my uh, quest and for VR stuff, I thought would be kind of fun. But again, another round of audio testing. Um, but thus far, the mobile version has been just the absolute easiest to, to run with in terms of setup, um, in terms of getting it up and going. I haven't gotten the picture bit yet or the... Um, I quite like to add artwork to either side of the of the mobile game stream because obviously that's kind of the super sucky thing about it being this particular gaming platform because of all the interfaces. It is literally the tiny one. We're playing on my phone. Um, but at least in terms of establishing my own little personal discipline of being like, hey, I'm going to share while I'm playing instead of just thinking these thoughts and moving my character around by myself – um, Streamlabs for mobile has made it pretty easy to get up and running and not have it be a total nightmare. The mic boost box. Okay. I'm literally writing that down on my list of, I have, I have kind of a, a list of potential IT, IT kerfuffles and tips and things that I've been pulling from YouTube videos to solve each of them. Um, because I, I'm going to look at it like a puzzle basically. And try to work my way through. Um, okay. I totally was not even watching the last couple of battles. Uh, all right. I've lost Moriel and I've lost Alna. W Wukong, Wutan. I thought it was Wutan. Wukong is going strong, though. His multiple uh, clones are, yes, yes, they defeated the Flower Power Lady. Success. Okay, cool. That should have been a larger power drop. Let's see if it did indeed drop what I wanted. No, I wanted these guys, Star Grazer Scrolls, pop up at the zeros and fives of some of the battles. Um, but sadly, they do not seem to have been in play today. So I did get some people cards that we can pull later, but no uh, Star Grazer cards. Okay. Some quick admin collecting. Um, some lovely little presents from other players that they've left at the bottom of my, um, the Oak Inn is, is where the characters store their power-ups um, in the form of all of their little furniture and their little apartments. It's kind of adorable. Actually, they visit each other in here and it's fucking adorable. So let's see if we can find somebody who's, who's visiting. So see how they pace back and forth in their little rooms and you can zoom. Oh, it's not finished loading. Um, you can zoom in on their little rooms, right? And they're, they're all pacing back and forth and you can tap them and they'll say something. Oh, here is busy. That means he's going to leave somewhere. Atandra says, I am the desert's fury. Grazul, I have returned. Like they have little statements that they'll just randomly say. Oh, come on, Thorn. There we go. The cold permeates everything. Brutus, death awaits the weak. But then, and I have a feeling either someone's going to visit Soros or Soros is going to go visit somebody. Ah, uh, here we go. Okay, so who's coming I can't tell who that is. Oh, that's Granite. So Granite is, yeah, he's coming to visit Soros because Soros wouldn't talk to me, right? Because he's anticipating these little visits. And see, now Granite is here and Granite won't talk to me either because he's busy. They're visiting. <gasps> oh, and look, look, Thoron has come to visit Grazul on the floor above. And really, they're just kind of bitching at each other. Like they're not, see, look, Soros is like, do you want tea? Granite is like, fuck you, thumbs down. Meanwhile, Thorin and Grizul seem to be having a grand old time. At least they're thinking the same thing, though. What that little pictogram even means, I am not sure. It looked like a little grave with a little cloud. I don't, I don't know. But I just, I, I enjoy that they have little personalities, um, and uh, just random ass little commands going on. Ah, like see, while we were busy, Antandra came upstairs to visit Shamira and apparently broke Shamira's heart. But she's leaving happy. I don't know what the fuck she just did. Um, but I, that seemed kind of bitchy. Um, anyways, <laughs> moving on. Just to finish out the admin before I get back to some of the battles. Um, 
Uh, I'm just going to collect really quickly from the guild battle. Um, I've played with all of my characters powered up relatively recently, and my damage was this, what is that, two, two billion um, number right here. Uh, so my reward level is 19. So rather than play three separate battles, that's going to add up to that. I'm just going to auto it. Um, cause the farther into the game you get, the more you can auto things. I am a little worried in my guild though, because my little camp site down here that you can see is, um, whoops, is falling down the ranks. Like I was up here where EMJ, Fortison and Japaka were, and now I'm, I'm a couple levels lower. And I think that's because I haven't necessarily been playing Hellscape very often. I usually just play once whenever it pops. Um, as opposed to the, you're, you're allowed to play five times each day. And I, I just don't, I don't find it very exciting. You're just putting your characters in and then they're hammering at somebody and you hope they survive for the full minute 30. It's just, it's not worth my time. Okay. Quick shopping spree, um, for some purple essence, which helps level up my characters and for these po coins, which help me buy power up furniture in Oak Inn. Um, then we're going to tap across the quest because I've done almost all of the main ones. <gasps> no, I actually didn't. I didn't do this primary one. I did not begin an actual campaign battle when I was on the front screen. I must've gotten distracted slash. I think that was when I was getting overexcited about, uh, Jurassic Park Dominion, not sucking as, as hard as I thought it would. Uh, let's see. Okay. So I have my Maulers in full force. Uh, I have Ains down here protected from this guy a little bit because Kelthert has a horrible habit of trying to pounce on him. Let's give this a go. And if this doesn't work, then I'm going to sub out my backline of Maulers, Citrana and uh, Alaro uh, for my, my full dream team of dimensionals back there and try to whammy them with some major sorcery. But it actually looks like this might hold. Uh, like is holding out for a second. Oh, no, who, oh and see, Kelther going for fucking Ains at the back. Always, always. He's so irritating. Um, but at least kind of predictable. So I can prepare at least. Ooh, okay. So the three-pronged battle might actually pop us up a full chapter. Um, or I, I think there's – the terminology is kind of funny because there's these big chapter battles within the larger chapter – um, that moves you along the story map. So this isn't the story map chapter, but this is one of the, I think the second to last major battle within the chapter. All right. Um, again, with Calther being out here, Thorne's going to do full warrior. Isabella's mage. Um, she's kind of frustrating. I'm going to, okay, actually I'm, I'm only allowed to use my characters once across all three of these battles. So this first battle I do want to possibly do some rearranging. I don't think my team will necessarily carry that. Um, let me check what's going on in the other ones. Oh, this is horrible because look at this. Not only do I have Kelther here, but right now my not the, the enemy Nara is against Ains, which means she'll just grab him and pull. And that that essentially means he's like tantamount to useless. Um, so better to give her Gwyneth. Oh, but then now Kelther is directly opposite Chichilia won't be necessarily useful. She runs behind the board and attacks them from, from their far right side. So, again, I want to do some rearranging. Let's see who's over here on this last one. Um, we'll just put Shamira in that last spot. This one might hold, which wouldn't be the worst. So let's play this one and see if this one holds as is. Um, Taylene's going to fire blast them. Shamira will cast some spells. The Nara's down at the front. Their Nara will probably defeat mine. Um, but at the very least, they are distracting each other and not attacking other things. And that's the important thing. Um, okay, so we're just down to the enemy, Shamira. But both Thorin and Taylene can pop back to life. So as long as... There we go. Never mind. So like as long as as long as one of them is, is alive, Taylene, as long as Thorin is alive, Taylene will keep popping. Okay, so one battle is done, so I just have to deal with these other two and possibly rearrange some things here. So let's try this. Let's try rearranging this one first. And what I think I'm gonna try is I'm gonna get rid of Citrana and move Antandra up here and put Arthur on the bottom line. 
and then put Soros here. He's my strongest that I have left that hasn't been played. And as a wilder, he has a power up against the Graveborn um, because of the faction differentials. So there is a strong possibility he will not suck at that. Uh, and then actually, let me, I'm going to move my, my Melusina, my Baba Yaga down below as well. So that Kelther, again, this guy with the scissor arms, Edward's scissor hands over here, doesn't immediately just run right at her. Hopefully he'll get distracted on route. The chances are similar to Ains. He usually will go after, see, he's already down there after her. Um, he'll go after my strong source, the strong sorcerer, sorcerers and sorceresses. Um, all right. This is not going as poorly as I thought. Um, half, half, half ish about of them are gone. Oh, never. I spoke too soon. I was like, as long as Entendre's still there and now Entendre's gone, Arthur's gone. Right. Okay. So that didn't work. So battle number one needs to be reconfigured. It didn't work as is. Battle number two, we also identified as needing some work uh, and not likely to work as is. Um, let's see what we can do. So right now we have four light bearers and one dimensional. So it's giving us part of the stained glass power up, but not as much as it could be. Let's see who we have in play that might be useful. So because of the faction differential, wilders might be especially useful. Um, though I don't have many of them that are going to be incredibly amazing. Actually, you know what? Let's let's fully swap out for a full wilder team because I do actually have maybe just enough to squeak through. So I'm going to put out – I've just put in essentially two tanky warriors up in the front lines. Um, Mermaid guy has an AoE splash power, but he's also going to push all of them back with his wave and hold them, and that might actually be really useful against – Kelther when he runs across the fields. Meanwhile, in the back, Tazzy causes general... Oops, nope. Tazzy, come back. Tazzy kind of adds a little health energy, also floats around the board, distracts them all a little bit, occasionally puts them to sleep. And Nomura up here is... I, I actually loathe when she's on the opposite side. I don't usually like to play her, but she, I do view her as a very powerful character in the, uh, on the opposite team. Um, because her health power really keeps everybody going longer than it should. Okay, let's see what happens. Oh, but I made the mistake of putting her against Nara, which means she's already down for the count. So shit, that was complete inattention on my part. Unless Ains can blast. Nope. Okay. That didn't work out well. Let's put Tazzy opposite Nara, and maybe that will distract her long enough. And let's switch Sirius and uh, I think he's called Oti, this kind of bull god that with his he has these flying beetles that sort of pop out that are pretty neat. Oh yeah, uh, Alfred, the the Mulan drop. So that's it. That's for people who want Mulan right away, um, because otherwise she's not available in the game for like fifty days or so. And you have to wait and save up your tokens. Um, but then some players are obviously incredibly excessively super keen and uh, they go out of the way. On the plus side, though, Mulan is one of these kind of characters, a, a dimensional character, which means you literally only need one card of her um, and then you're good. So as long as you have one full pur purple card of her, um, you can basically tie her strength to the strength of another character and then she's whatever level that character is. So at the very least, it's not. There are some characters where you need like 10 or whatever of their cards. And you literally do end up um, like, I, I will admit, I started paying for Moriel for a hot second. And it was like pieces of her card, essentially. And I think by the time I... So the Wilders aren't working. Let's... And no one was particularly standing successful so let's try one more formation maybe okay so this is a tanky wilder and let's put Sirius back in he was the least sucky of the wilders going up there um and then also cost the cost benefit trade-off for the mulan also for those who save all of their tokens to wait for her is not just the time delay but also those would otherwise be going towards other player, other characters that you're trying to build systematically. Um, like my Wukong, for instance, he's one that I built up by, by essentially collecting enough labyrinth tokens to get pieces of his card 
over and over and over again until I got full cards. And then you're basically stalled on some of your other development while you wait for that. Um, okay, so I'm going to presume, given how many four. Okay, that's still working. All right, that is still working. Just being evil. Here we go. Back in the saddle again. Um, uh, I'm at, wait, what is it? Okay, so I have one, two, two more. The battle I'm in uh, plus two more mega battles and then a handful of small ones and then the really big mega battle and then completing that and getting to the top of that stairwell moves me along the world map. What love? What's my current land called? So I'm currently in the sunken lands. Oh, and it's the so it'll be a big battle too. No wonder they're so vicious. You start out over here in Ranhorn City, and you battle your way through the story map um, up and around the Bastion of Elements, Yggdrasil, Tomb of the Ancients, Desert Sanctuary, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and then once you um you get to go to the next island. So I am just about to, uh, maybe in, in about a week, or it's probably a week of wreckages and being entirely on a different continent, which will just be fucking awesome. Um, hopefully, Alfred, I fixed the thing, fingers crossed, because, yeah, it was doing something wonky, and the problem is I don't actually even know what it was doing. That was wonky, which I find concerning. Ooh, what am I managing? Did, did a request come in? Oh, I love when this happens. So see, uh, Mimi has asked to borrow my Entendre because my Entendre is so successfully powered up, it actually appears as one of these like super useful borrow, borrowable characters um, in the top line. And it can only be borrowed five times. So one character each week can be borrowed by five different other players. Um, and thus far, Max, I've had three people asking for her simultaneously. Um, but I know it's definitely the case with some of the super popular ones that uh, literally like all five spots are – all five lending spots are used. And that's my goal to be, to be I don't know, just useful to the, the rest of the community with, with my characters because um, when I was especially starting out, like before I got my own Ains, for instance, I every week was borrowing um, – from, from within the auto lend thing. And even the way I got Ains was via this whole little mercenary system that they have of garrison heroes. So technically my, my Ains, um, I think has one or two more rounds to go where, where every, however many days you borrow a clone. Um, so mine is a clone of ham snatchers. And, um, eventually after so many uses in the mercenary version there, you actually get to keep your, your clone forever. And then it's just yours, which fingers crossed. I am nearing that point. Um, because once that happens, I can then start using those mercenary garrison points to, uh, snag another player, not another player, another, um, a hero, another hero and start working my way up there. That's the only way literally to get some of the or original dimensional characters, the, the first generation of them essentially for players who've entered the game later. All right, so right now we've just entered the Hero's Tavern, which is where you can claim people cards um, from one of the different currencies at the top. You can spend 2,800 diamonds, which means I don't have enough. Um, 10 faction scrolls, which is where we are right now. I do have enough for that. And today's faction that you get is Graveborn. So I'm going to claim and try to get some Graveborns. Uh, you need 10 regular scrolls or 100 of these hearts, which are the, the companion points that you get from friends within the game. So here we go. Fingers crossed for some purple cards or a purple card at least. No, we just got some blues. Blues are not the worst thing. Um, they're fodder to help you build up to purples and to help you move your purples along. So uh, at the very least, there were some blues. I've definitely had a draw where I only got one blue, but I've also had a draw where I got four purples and it was magic, like magic. Whenever like a multiple purple drop would happen, Jules and I used to send like pictures and exciting squeeze about about such things um and maybe that's also why i'm playing this game because like like live because i get really excited about it and i don't have anyone to share it with now so congratulations you guys get stuck hearing about it um 
when you when you join the stream. So my my apologies, but also you have chosen to join the stream. So there's some free will there. Um, but really, I know it's just some sort of weird form of gambling when the purple cards drop, but it's still weirdly exciting. Um, I don't think I have anything super snazzy going on that can be evolved today, which is kind of sucky. And this was something that took me a really long time to understand exactly what was going on. Like I used to just up, like merge the blues willy nilly and then pop them along. And now I'm much more strategic about it. Um, so for instance, actually I can do something here and at least get a level up point. Um, so right now I have multiples of these, these gold edged blues. Um, and that's good because I can therefore turn them in this one into a, an unedged purple. And then because I have duplicates, I'm going to do the same again. Um, and I have another unedged purple and two unedged purples will give me a gold edged purple. Now for that particular one, it didn't matter which one I decided to run with because I already happen to have multiple uh, double edged uh, double edged purple dudes here, Ooh, which actually I now have enough to do that because now I can spend these guys are my my blue cards and they're low level characters that are essentially only useful for fodder in the in the early game they can be cool to play with but um eventually you're you're really just using them as food um and then the important thing about these this is as far as they'll go they'll go to a double a, a double-edged gold um but once they're double-edged gold that's exactly what these guys want to eat so when my main here is the the edged gold cards so now i have in reserve my little guy down here on the bottom waiting double check no ascensions here or here and then again these ones don't ascend these ones literally just get tied to pre-existing characters so for instance my Ains is tied to uh entendre herself or no not to entendre who is Ains tied to i'm totally spacing i initially had him tied to rowan but rowan just wasn't oh wait, yeah no it is entendre ah but then the engraving so he's still red um, oh, but there's an engraving that I can do. I've saved up enough gemstones, apparently. Okay, cool. So I can spend 300 of these little gemstone glyphs and pop up one more level. Um, he's level 61 of 100, so still quite a ways to go before he's fully engraved and has his his silver stars versus the red stars. Let's double check what else I can do in here. Is there anything else? I want to save up those strength and gear for Ains as well. How so? Normally there's a little cue. Hmm. Okay. Ignoring that. Right. And then let's finish out a bit of the admin, collect all of the things from the store that are free for the day. These melodic gifts are mystifying. Those little records have yet to drop. So I feel like it's just teasing me. It's teasing me. I want the records so I can try to get those crystal ball tokens. But no, it hasn't happened yet. Soon, I hope. Uh, meanwhile, these last two quests have dropped, which means I can collect all my treasure chests across the top. This gives me some diamonds. Some snow keys, which unfortunately are for a little gambling game, which is kind of evil, um, but which I will be playing because eventually you get the little token. What? What did I not? Oh, I got one treasure chest. He's eligible to grab. Did I get the mail already? I did not. Okay, lots of lovely gifts filled up from different AFK activities. That's why it's called AFK Arena, because originally... You kind of set in motion stuff and then you put the game down and depending on how long it's been since you came back, there would be stuff accrued, I guess, is my understanding. Was not an original player. I think it was out for at least a bit before um, I started playing, but not a huge bit, if that makes sense, because the only about a generation and a half of heroes had launched 
Um, so the, the lame purpose of this game is essentially you're just clicking randomly on the board in the hopes of either getting one of these treasures or collecting those snowflake points. And the funny thing is, while the treasures are good and move you to the next level, which possibly gives you a better odds of getting more snowflakes or snow flowers or whatever the fuck those are. Um, the snow flowers, so see, that was sadly just plus one. See, oh, see, plus five, that's better. Um, those will event, can, you can turn into a people card, a specific people card. And there's actually two possible characters I would, I would like to pull if possible. So I have 21 of these possible clicks I can make, which is incredibly boring to watch, but suck it because it gives me treasures. Okay. Next floor. Oh, see that blue 120. That's two blue, blue people cards. It's the fodder cards again, but still potentially useful. Okay. Almost down to the bottom of this. I got a portal. Three more to go. I'm at 88 now, which is great because I was only at 40 something. So I doubled my uh, snow flowers, which is fantastic. Um, because here's what you can get with those from the Dwarven Hunting Journal. Frigid air blows down over the lofty mountaintops and crashes on the shivering lowlands like an avalanche as part of Alna's frosty festivities. Um, so I have 93 of them, which would let me get all the greens, but then see what I can get with the uh, people cards here. So Alna herself is a 450. So if I can get 450 snow flowers, I can get an Alna. Or this guy is a, a relatively new-ish dropped character. And I believe he came out for the, like, the one week of the game that I was not super playing every day um, in the midst of all the recent kerfuffle. And so uh, I've not really tested him out, but he does look pretty badass. Although I've got to admit, I'm unclear if he's, he's called Tarnos the Atoner. Is he blue because he's frozen or is he a mermaid? I don't know. What are his powers? The Atoner's Prison. Uh, sacrifices health for damage reduction and deals AOE damage. That's always one of my favorite things. Um, oh, and he can... Are the pillars of uh, he his pillars of sin? If he's already popped off this power, it like amplifies that power, and so he sort of okay. So he sort of sets out those pillars across the board, and then uses them as lightning rods to amplify his power and also teleport between. So he's possibly also a good character to confuse others, which could be really great. Oh, the battle of blood opened. That doesn't actually suck. That can be kind of fun. Let's let's do. A couple of Battle of Bloods. This is one of the rotating events um, that pops up every, I don't know, every every month, every two months or so. So what's going to happen is I'm going to pick a random hero to drop. I'm going to put out Granite as part of my formation. And since I put out Granite, the Mauler, I'm going to also put out the other two Maulers who are here. Oh, I can only put out two at one time. Okay. So now what's happened is that Either a live player who happens to have simultaneously signed up at the same time, which is rarer, or um, a sort of AI-generated version of someone's human play is going to pop to other characters based off of what I put down, or just based off of what their cards were. Um, but now I can see that I can see their choices. I can choose which ones I want to put down and where. Um, and then I'm going to go with Flora at the top. And then they can now see my choices and make their determination of who they're going to put down, which that was a weird move because the Wilders are, are less awesome than the Maulers, but what have you. And then I get to choose my last one. I'm going to put him in place as a energy hold. And then it's going to send out the battle. So I'm playing someone called Valientes, but bear in mind, this might not be a live play against Valientes. This might be based off of their selections earlier when they happen to play um, against a similar card set, I think. There's some low-level AI retention going on. I'm not sure. 
Okay, possibly I'm winning this one. And if I remember correctly, if I win three battles of this in a row, that's essentially the fastest mechanism to collect all the possible rewards for the daily within this particular event. Um, and sometimes the treasures here are actually pretty decent. So let's see, what are the quests within the Battle of Blood? So we've completed one battle, success, achieved one victory, complete two battles, complete three battles, achieve two victories. Okay, so I only need two victories, but I need to play three battles. Cool. So let's do two more of these, minimum. And let's see what cards we got against Yarrick of the Shark Shadow Guild. All right, I have a lot of Graveborns. Um, ooh, but I also had the Prince of Persia, and he's kind of fun. So the reason I like to look at... Actually, ooh, but I do... I just... I can't resist on Tandra. Um, I do like to play with the faction power-ups, so I do usually kind of lean into whoever I have multiple faction cards for. Um, so I happen to have... Uh, I think that's the bear, the Mahler bear on Entendre. So I'm going to play them. That hasn't necessarily given me a faction power up since. F How did Kelf? Did I pick Kelther at some point? I didn't mean to. Whatever. He's on the board. Um, but uh, Flora as a celestial me essentially changes the factor math. And, uh, Instead of having to have three of the same faction, two of the same faction counts as three if you have uh, a, cel a celestial on the board. She's sort of like a wild, like a wild card or a blank card, like that empty Scrabble piece that uh, could be any letter you want, and not just Flora, any celestial, which is kind of useful. So my Taylene, uh, that po that that I can play, she's also that same celestial faction, and can therefore play that wild card. Uh, roll for me as well. So fingers crossed that I can I can get her ascended to the final level because she just would be glorious and also a major contribution to the community for folks to borrow, which would be fun. Okay. Um, again, I'm going to play Entendre and this time it's her wolf friend. So confirming my two, they've Played the Mahler Bear, ooh, and the Mahler Sorcerer. He pops out little totems that can be very distracting and irritating as well. Um, since I don't really have any threes that I want to play, I'm going to put out that uh, Celestial that I'm otherwise kind of unfamiliar with, and then I'm actually going to play her. Uh, she's an occasionally useful little warrior chick. And since I played her... I'm just going to actually weirdly play her. She's one of those not super powerful ones, but she's an occasional good buff for other characters, especially my Ains al Ghul. He isn't on the board, obviously, but that can't be her only power. Um, she's, she's, she and the, the sort of little anime will have much chance to play with them. For character, when new characters drop, even if you don't have the card for them yet, there's usually this three day period right when they get released where you can play as them in certain adventures. Um, usually there's really a really specific, like even little sort of training practice event. Uh, so you can practice with them and see what they do. Okay. So that was three battles total. That should give us, yep, all of the dailies. So let's see what treasure trusts we have. Oh, okay. Not super amazing, but that fact, that scroll, is always useful. So let's not knock it. Oh, and there was something else. Oops, I keep closing it. Oh, okay. There were some weeklies. How far across did I get the weeklies? Only a smidge. Only one more little chest. That's cool. Right, what are the other events? Oh yeah, we have the beasts to power up. Pretty cool. It's kind of like the living incarnation of the, the statues. Um, the sort of front door gateway statues. And uh, I think he's part of the Chinese New Year events, which is pretty neat. Okay, nothing really is going on in there. I don't play Treasure Scramble or Temporal Rift, or, and Temporal Feedback is a sub thing associated with Temporal Rift. They're just not worth my time. 
Um, oh, see, we can do the guild tra- This is Oh, this is exactly that training ground that I was just describing. So Mulan's has already launched. And if we play it through, we get a people, a full people token and uh, some diamonds and another fodder token. So we might as well give it a go. Let's see what Mulan does. What are her powers? Is she worth all saving up all of those tokens or the, what was it, Alfred? $70 discount price. Okay, so the Burning Light Muriel says, the Arena of Trials is now available for Mulan. Let's go. Welcome to the Arena of Trials. There are a total of six battle stages to get through. Achieve victory and claim rewards from each stage as you progress. Once you've completed all stages, you may claim the final reward, the Arena of Trials reward chest. All enemies will be reset every time you enter the Arena of Trials. Make use of other heroes to set up a formation around your designated hero, i.e. Mulan, and then begin your first battle. All right. So, oh, and then you may make use of your guildmates' heroes to defeat the Phantom within the Arena of Trials. You will be undertaking five battles in a row. You can adjust the level of your enemies, defeat enemies, and overcome your limits, reach the higher echelons of the leaderboard. Okay, so that's that's kind of a sub-quest within the quest to actually get this big treasure chest here surrounded by crystals. Um, we don't necessarily have just have to defeat all of these little guys find them as we move across the board. So let's start with this one here. It's going to give us a random accumulation of enemies as well as only six people to choose between. Or sorry, not six. What is that? Ten people to choose between. Um, Mulan has to be one of our five, so we can't alter. I don't – not knowing exactly what she does, I don't know to put her on the front line or the back line – so let's put her on the front line first. I'll put her up against Sirius. Who else have we got? Okay, so we've got a bunch of other dimensionals here. Baba Yaga is, aka Melusina, is always pretty magical. So let's do her. This is a relatively new Hypogean. I've not really used very much, but I did use him. He was pretty badass. So let's give him a go. And then let him Graveborn. So um, the Ghost Pirate guy is, is a pretty shoot 'em up tank guy. And then Serena or Serenia, um, is sort of a mermaid energy suck siren. So let's see what they can do. It might be interesting, especially to have Serena up opposite that evil Scarlet, because um, I believe she's a big energy boost. So maybe they'll just distract each other at the bottom and essentially like invalidate out the presence of each other on the board. Right, I can't tell what Mulan is doing. She seems to have gone behind and then distracted the battle. And then she has a horse and she just ran across the screen. And now she's back in the middle of the battle. And then she just stands there. What does she do? Okay, there's a massive slashy thing she did. She killed the squirrel. No, no, the squirrel didn't die. The squirrel made it over to the ghost pirate captain and he killed her. So she's kind of doing like a sprinty thing, I guess. Some sprinty dashes. Let's see. Either way, that was successful. So we'll move on to the next one. Uh, this looks like mostly wilders. What have we got? Okay, so three wilders. Ooh, that this little pixie here. What is she called? Astar. Um, is pretty great healer. Uh, which will be infuriating overall. But let's counter her out with Merlin up here. Is also a great healer, I have learned recently. So let's utilize him. Um, and then I'll put Arthur out so I have three dimensionals so I get my little stained glass power up. And then I have a choice between do I want to put out two light bearers or two maulers? Uh, since it's Wilders, let's, let's do the Maulers. And actually, let's put Mulan in the back line. See what she does back there. And put Granite in front opposite, uh, the turtle. Okay, here we go. So she ran straight to the back line, which is good, because if she can kill Lorisan really quickly, which she just did, so that was pretty badass. 
Um, cause Lorison was doing the energy threads, sucking my character's powers back and forth. Um, I've lost track of Mulan. She's like so speedy on the battle battlefields. I don't necessarily see the method to her madness. It made sense when she went directly across to Lorsan, but then she disappeared to the horse and now she's gone up a level to the back line, the, the topmost line. Okay. Success. Let's see if that's her pattern. She does her row and then she moves up to the next row is the current presumption of her mechanism. Right. When is the next one of these? Uh, Oh my god, okay, mostly Maulers. My same formation from the last battle was actually intact as possibilities here. So maybe let's just try them again. And this one, Mulan, is going up against the new Mauler sorcerer, who's pretty badass, and I hope to collect him eventually. I think I might have one card of him, which is not enough to play him in anything, but still a start. At least he's on my playing field. As a, as a future possibility, There's there's many characters I have no cards for. Yet. Okay, Grizzul's about to go down, hopefully. Because uh, if not, he's going to pop his little minions. It's Grizzul down in that front bit. I think Mulan did the same thing. She went up, and now that she has no one up, she's gone down. Field. Okay, so maybe she goes up, up, and then if she goes, if there's nothing up, she goes down. Do this one way over here. Send my little cart a rambling. Okay, the team that I had for the last one is not an option here. But I can still do three dimensionals if I pop out. This is Da Vinci. This is this beautiful archer character that's a, a celestial from a couple of months ago that I rather enjoy. And... Let's put somebody tanky. Let's go with this guy. Ooh, no, Anoki. There we go. Let's see what happens. Um, because that wilder wolf lady, Mishka, is actually pretty vicious. So it'd be great if he can just hold her in place. Hopefully my archer can take up Pippa the squirrel down in the front line. Mulan is struggling to help with the midline. Okay, and all lines just seem to disappear simultaneously, I guess. That happened really fast. It felt like mid-battle, and yet, and then it was suddenly over. I don't know. Okay. Next. Uh, oh, it's this same team. Survived. So we'll reuse them rather than reshuffling. Although if they don't make this through, I might move my Celestial Archer opposite Tazzy in the midline. Although they're doing pretty successful, successfully. They're doing pretty well. Only that last Sorceress is remaining and she doesn't have very much health left. But she seemed to be immune from a lot of their powers, but not Mulan's. So well done, Mulan. Thank you. Some gold coins, which it's funny. At one point I was like, I have so many gold coins. They don't matter. I don't really need to focus on continuing to collect the gold coins. No, it, it mattered so much. Uh, X idiot and I were traveling um, in the outback and both obsessively playing this every day. And I ran out of gold coins and it was really sad. And I could only afford the bare minimum of daily uptakes. And it was just depressing. Okay, let's try this Wilder Tank and Warrior in the front line. Uh, the only faction power I'm getting is because I have a Hypogean in the field, which is kind of lame, but they're actually short of actually doing three Wilders and putting Namora out there as a health buffer. Uh, I can't really do better on the faction scores. And like I said earlier, I love, I'm, I'm scared of Namora when she's on the enemy field, but. 
it always feels like a waste of space to put her on the team, even though she does actually help them. I think I just would always rather like be offense than defense. And Namora is far more about defense. Oof. Okay, down to two, but just against Scarlet. So let's see if this new guy can hold out against her. Nice. Yes, he can. Right at the end. All right. That should unlock. Yep. Congratulations, champion. You have passed the final trial and may claim your rightful rewards. Thank you. Uh, so now that's unlocked and I can move my cart around to there. Lots of lovely rewards. The option to spend a terrifying amount of money to get more rewards. No, thank you. And uh, we'll pop out of there. And let's actually go claim some of those rewards. So we should have quite a few people cards to claim. So we can claim all of these Botter Blues. Nice. Okay. And then... What just happened? Summon? Okay. Um, all right, who did I get? I have a Citrana, a Nomura, a fodder card that's auto purpled, which, again, useful for fodder. Now I don't have to do three, do three blues to a purple. And uh, one of these little health chicks. So, I'm, Citrana, I'm either, I might actually, is she at five stars or four stars? Let's go investigate. Auto ascend, two Nomoras equal a double edged Nomora. Where am I with Nomora? Is she? My okay, so my Nomora is already at max ascension level, which means that double Nomora here is now just fodder. Um, which it's funny because I actually have two fodders already down there that I haven't. Chosen to raise up because I was waiting until I get more of a build up. Um, hmm. I don't know. It's almost looking like I should just evolve her Solis instead. So I have three of her. You essentially need four of any four four of those purple edges. Okay, we'll come back to that. I don't want to run all that math in my head right now. And uh, who is the other one? Citrana that I wanted to double check. Okay, so there's one Citrana. She's at four. Okay, so cool. So I'm one Citrana away from getting her to five stars, and then she'll be maxed out down here on the bottom in terms of cards. Then she just gets evolved. The stars come from the furniture, from the engraving stones, and other mechanisms after that point only. What's the puppet master? Is that just the skins? Yes, that's boring. Um, did anything new open on a prosperous quest? Uh, no, Merchant's Adventures was an elaborate story thing. I didn't feel like playing the other day, and I still, to be honest, don't feel like playing now. So... Let's just play the Labyrinth. Um, oh, wait. Actually, is that enough diamonds? No. No, 2,700 I need. Okay. Sadness. I got really excited for a second. I thought maybe I could do another people pull, but no. All right. So Labyrinth, um, after a certain point, you have two variations of it, the normal one that you play the whole game knowing, and then this version called Dismal, where you essentially join a team and then one of the teammates carries the team through the labyrinth. Um, I find the Dismal version very stressful, not just in terms of finding the team, but then deciding who is going to actually carry the game. And uh, I would love if there was just a team I could be on and just have somebody do it for me. But unfortunately, that is then what everybody tries to do. So you often get to the end of the time period and nobody has played it. And then somebody stress plays and it just, it turns into stress. 
um, because then people get grumpy if you play, but then you're not the super powerful one and then you don't get all the rewards. So I just, I like to avoid it and just uh, play the regular labyrinth as is. Supposedly pretty soon I'm going to get to the point where the labyrinth is automatic for me, which would just be, or like it'll autoplay. I look forward to that very, very much. Okay, so... Who am I missing from my... I guess this is my dream team then. Uh, Let's put Arthur in the back line. Okay. Let's see what they do. Chichili is going to run across or behind and around to Melusina in the middle, in the midfield. Flower Power Lady is going to pop up those energy suck flowers in the middle, um, which can be dangerous. The time turner that's attacking Ains. um, Hopefully they kill him sooner rather than later. He may not be dead yet, even though he's gone. That's the dangerous thing with him. Because if he's the last one standing, he does this, which is what he's doing, where he restarts the battle. And it essentially, because it's running, similar to City of Heroes, it's running like a sort of math spec of here. here's the probability of this, and then it just throws it down. And it may or may not do the thing, depending on your probabilities, but um, therefore running it a second time doesn't get you exactly the same results. So same thing. And that time turner demon allows that to happen, which means that if you just barely squeaked by, then chances are you may uh, just barely squeak by or not squeak by at all, as the case may be. All right, choose a relic. After each of these battles, we get to choose one of these guys, um, which will essentially apply only for the labyrinth, but equal a huge power up that each of the characters takes to the battle with them. So blue ones are the lowest level, purples are are the next one up, and then golds are the ultimate. So for instance, if, if we had two blues and a purple, it's just easier to choose the purple regardless of what it is. Um, same if there's a gold over any of the other ones, if it's all the same, or with slight variation where these ones happen to apply to all. You can see on the bottom, each of those little coins says all. Sometimes they'll be for specific types of characters. Sometimes they'll be for a very specific character. If you're not playing those ones, obviously it doesn't make as so much sense. So... Um, low level restoring health, uh, each time they kill an enemy is probably the most useful thing they have. Uh, I actually really like this archer, so I'm going to grab her rather than do another battle. Now the trade-off for that is that I therefore did not accrue a relic and therefore the power up that the relic would grant me. Um, which means I don't want to do that at, at every turn. And uh, in the meantime, sorry, just seeing a bunch of texts that have come in, uh, as well as it is my turn again in my chess game on chess.com. Oh, which reminds me, there was a thing that I added to the stream that I'm still working on that's on my IT fix it list, where it let you attach your Twitter accounts and... Or Twitter, chess.com, and then Instagram was also an option. But for all that, I'm just like, fuck it here. Take my data. Transparency. I wasn't sure about that one. But I did attach, I think, chess.com and my Twitter feed. Um, but then not all the way. So I think there's, oh, yay, a gold one already. Uh, but see, it's only on the hard mode of the, lab, of the third floor of the labyrinth. So that is only useful should I choose that pathway. And I know right now that I just don't want to. Um, So we're going to go with the damage reduction. Um, I used to love, and the third mode of the labyrinth, the hard mode is great. Like there's a little demon that lives in the middle of it. And you get extra treasure rewards for beating him. It's awesome. But uh, I usually, like, I I just had a really bad spate where I had to uh, revive my characters too often. And every time you have to revive your characters en masse in the labyrinth, you use this thing called Dura's Blessing, and you only get so many of those. Um, They're a special drop that happened from all the different AFK events. And, um, and I don't mean AFK, the game events. I mean, specifically the games where you set it in motion and then it plays out while you're gone, depending on what variables you left it. And uh, we'll go with intelligence-based heroes since I have so many sorcerers in my lineup. 
everybody's health is pretty good, so I don't need to fountain of vitality, so we'll go straight for a battle. Um, ooh. Kaz can be kind of dangerous. She might kill Brutus, but at the very least, they'll distract each other. We'll go from there. Give it a shot. Let's see. Um, this purple demon that Antandra is fighting in the front is kind of a neat, uh, I, I don't know, just architecture of his character because his stomach is actually his mouth. And so when he wins the battle, his stomach like opens and a tongue licks out um, as if like, mm, success. All right, uh, if all else fails, especially if I have ants in the field, I like to do the energy point ones uh, because they can be particularly useful at essentially – I played the labyrinth once where ains I, I hit so many energy drops on the relics that basically as soon as the battle started, he just would pow, 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 and then everyone would die. It was the best labyrinth of my entire AFK arena career, although – should it be called a career? It's not really a career, is it? Um, I don't know if I've seen this formation before. That guy with the, the skulls showing out, he has a really interesting damage power where if he gets his full energy drop, um, oh, we're not going to get to it. They've killed him. But uh, if, if he had gotten to there, the ground of the arena would have sprouted little skeletal sort of dagger points as if there's all sorts of rib cages that have just exploded from the floor and then they stay out there. And if any of my characters cross them or move past them, um, they, uh, they die. Okay. So I get a mini shield for a hot second though. It's a very low level hold or I get a pause and the possibility that they receive more day. Okay, so let's do that one. And then there's no choice but to go to the Fountain of Vitality, which is not the worst thing. So thank you. 50% health boost. Abandoned wagon, anyone I want? No. So let's go for this battle. All right, what have we got? Pippa. Pippa's probably... Okay, this is not bad. A shot. There's always a weird chance that Kazard, Kazard, and that wilder hero might be doing something very unexpected. But at the same time, Antandra was likely to kill Satrana, which she's done already really quickly. Ains is already doing a pow pow, which is great because we had that energy relic, and that's just Ains after like one and a half energy relics. Like if we can get him powered up with some more, oof. It is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Okay, let's do 40% plus 40% critical strike damage. Again, force through the Fountain of Vitality. And then we'll do the boss battle, and that'll close out this labyrinth floor. There's three floors of the labyrinth in regular mode, which is what we're playing. And uh, let's see what have we got. So lots of healers. We have our energy, bun energy thread bunny. Give it a go. Kaz, like Entendre, is a bit of a, a, da a runner. So she and Entendre might only connect in battle for a second and then get distracted and run away to deal with other people. Yeah, Entendre's run up to deal with the skull guy. Kaz, for whatever reason... Oh, Kaz stayed there. Did you see? That was Baba Yaga's claw. Um, the story of the Baba Yaga is so cool. It's um, this, it's like the, the traditional witch that lives in the woods, right? Except very specifically, Baba Yaga has a house where it's it's essentially on chicken legs and it's sort of more like a bowl that then has a house floating in the bowl. And the chicken legs will walk it through the forest. So it's never exactly in the same place. Um, but so what that what they've crossed over into the game is that she has this chicken claw that will hold a hero in place. Or not a hero, the one of the opposing side in place. Um, which is beautiful sometimes. Okay, so what have we got? All golds, which is great. We can do the Yggdrasil branch. All surviving heroes recover 40% of lost HP after battle. That's 
potentially very useful. Um, although my heroes haven't been taking huge health hits, so maybe not. Then we have the choice of Eagle Strike. Um, arrows raid down upon enemies every 15 seconds, inflicting damage upon them. That's a pretty decent one. It's just constant pain. It makes the battles go quicker. Or we have the Vanguard's War Flag. Frontline heroes' defense ratings are up 25%. Energy recovery rating. Thank you for the data warning. Energy recovery rate plus 40% when injured. Let's go with Eagle Strike. That will just get us through this faster. And to be perfectly honest, I am starting to get hungry. It is lunchtime. All right. Uh, what's our health level? Brutus is down to half, but otherwise we're looking good. So we'll just go straight to a battle. Ugh, Silas is in this one. Frontline as well. So let's try to hold him in place with Brutus a little bit and see how that goes. But I am going to move Ains away from both cloaked skeleton crescent is going to separate from him and roam around the field. And I don't want either Damon and his friend or Silas to go after Ains. Uh, also worth noting in the Labyrinth that if your hero dies, um, they're no longer playable in the Labyrinth unless you revive them with Dura's Tears, which is why Dura's Tears are so fancy and expensive and useful. Um, and so when that happens, usually what happens is I, I play until I run out of heroes. Um, or I just I try to keep all of them alive consistently throughout. But um, if it's a particularly hard battle, which also worth noting that the math is super variable on the on the battles. So actually, every every time the labyrinth opens, um, sometimes it's actually just a little bit easier. Sometimes it's average, and then sometimes it is a painful clusterfuck that you are never going to get through without using Dura's tears like eighty times. And unfortunately, I had a massive run of those, and uh, it was bad. All right, so Demon's Bite. I'm not playing with any Hypogeans, so that one is not that useful. Beast Claw, agility-based heroes deal 20% damage. I don't know how many agility folks I have in the field. I think Entendre is one, but I don't know if I wanted to say play that just for her. Restores the weakest teammate's health. That's only one character. Okay, so let's... let's, let's See if that boosts on Tondra a little bit. Uh, let's go for this middle brown battle. Brown bottles are the lower level ones. Red ones will probably give better relic drops, but are harder to beat. Um, my lineup to their lineup looks sufficient, especially since I'm more than double their point value up at the top, and I'm up 61.6%. So let's see. Ains is going to pop really early. He knocked them all down more than half. So Wukong is nearly dead. The turtle. The light bearer just went down. Okay, cool. There we go. Okay, what have we got? So the Devoted Whisper is just for Graveborns. The Coral Vow is just for light bearers. You can see the little logos at the bottom which means the Pearl Oath deals more damage the lower your hero's HP falls. Damage is increased up to 25%. Is probably our best bet to be actively useful. So no one's health is super painful. Who's in the abandoned wagon? No one great, so we'll just grab the health points just for fun. And because that pathway takes us to a battle instead of just the wagon versus that cart, because I, I they're – the cart is a chance to buy some stuff, but there's rarely anything I want on the cart. I don't want anyone in that wagon either, so let's go for the battle and get another relic. Uh, majority Wilders, which is good against my Maulers. So let's keep this lineup and roll with it and see what happens. Uh, what's his face? Has his energy threads he's going to throw out? Ains just blasted everybody. Oh, he and he totally got two of them just in his blast. That's fantastic. So in the labyrinth, build the powerhouses, and as soon as they launch, they just annihilate. Okay, relic again. All of them are ambivalent, so no easy way to get rid of them or to 
eliminate possibilities to decide faster. So the Horn of Replenishment heals teammates for 6% of their max HP at the beginning of battles. The Supporter's War Flag backline heroes attack ratings plus 5%, critical rating, ratings plus 10%. And the Aegeus, Aegis, Aegis of per- Preservation casts a protective shield over all allied heroes for 3 seconds that is able to mitigate damage equal to 20% of their max HP when any enemy hero uses an ultimate skill for the first time. Okay, that has a lot of different clauses to it and relies on them knocking off their AoEs and then getting the shield, and then it's only 20%. So that's not super exciting. We've already done something similar to the Horn of Replenishment, so let's pop the Supporter's War Flag and move on to the next battle. What have we got? Uh, mostly wilders. Again, that's good because my maulers automatically get points against them. If you can see up at the top, plus 72.6% up from regular, uh, battle, battle power, which is awesome. Um, nothing super exciting that needs moving at this point. Let's see. The, the hypogene in the middle is a bit of a mystery i've rarely played or run into him i'm not quite sure what he does to be honest so let's hope my dudes can hold out that might be his defense that he's sharing i'm not sure he seems to be able to go invisible as well but entendre just killed him anyways so whatever he was capable of did not matter to her because she's a glorious glorious fairy tale warrior goddess like that Okay, victory. Let's see what our relic choices are. Uh, We have the relic chest. Increases the health and defense ratings of all allied heroes by 1% for every elite or legendary relic that is possessed. And can be increased by up to a total of 10%. So I can get 10% health and defense ratings because I have approximately 10 by now. Um, Heaven's Grace increases the wearer's health regeneration by 40%. Again, we've done at least one health regeneration one. I I don't know if we need another because my characters are holding strong. It seems to be a medium or low level labyrinth this this particular time around. And then celestial fury, allied celestial heroes use lightning strikes to attack and stun an enemy target once every eight seconds. So I do have three celestials on the board. So this might actually be super powerful for me to pop, um, especially given the others were the other two options were not that amazing. Okay. Again, a health check. Everyone's bars are up, so I can skip the Fountain of Vitality and go for this red-level battle. It's to be a little more difficult because I've been doing the the brown battles um, as opposed to these higher-up red bosses. So let's see what's going to happen. Oh, okay. So Sophia here is going to pop a big defensive um, pyramid over everybody. Silas is going to run behind. He's going to energy tie people. That one, I don't want to have Ains off of it because it's sort of a pseudo-ranger shooting things. Same for Scrag here. Scrag and Kren are going to be... Kren's going to be shooting. Scrag runs across the battlefield, which is very irritating. So are those all the moves I want to make? Maybe I will put Arthur opposite... Edward scissor hands there though. Let's see what happens. Okay, so there's Sophia's pyramid. But maybe look how close all of them are to popping off their energy powers. There goes Melisina, there goes Arthur, Ains. Would you care to join them, please? There we go. Ooh, sucked them all the way down really quickly. Well played, team. Well played. All right, choose a relic. Uh, Lucius's fortitude is only for Lucius. I am not playing with Lucius. I don't especially like Lucius. He's a bit of a dipshit. We will ignore that one. The Devoted Whisper uh, is just Graveborns. Right now I'm just playing Maulers and Celestials. So Heartseeker with its plus 60% critical strike damage. It is. Choose. All right, so what have we got? So they have their healer in the center. They have Serena, who's going to be healing her allies as well as like life leeching 
from everybody across the board who is in the storyline of the story. This is for whatever reason, this is the plot line that always sticks with me of all the character stories is that Zafriel is like such a bad husband to his wife that she ends up being a hypogean demonic powerhouse um, because the shit went so poorly. And so he's a bit of a C word, but he's going to be kind of, what does what it say he's doing? Electrical transference. Yeah. He's holding and sending out stuff. Entendre v. Entendre, but mine is twice the power of that one. So I might move Ains up here and then move Melisina here in the hopes that maybe if she is going to put out her hold power, it'll hold Zafrael down because he's one of the few that's going to be super ranging across the board, I think. Where does he stay in place? Let's see. I don't play him because he's such a dick, but... Yeah, see, he moved across. He did a weird zigzag. Right. Ain super popped. Their entendre is down. Their Thoron, I don't think, has done his revive yet, so he may be down for a second, but he's going to pop up as soon as they move away from him. But in the meantime, they... Oh, you didn't kill the healer entirely. Okay, now they've gotten them. victory okay relics um all possibly applicable applicable to my current team the carnal desire is only maulers but i have two maulers on the field and that would increase life leech by three points for every mauler so that's six points of life leech demons deceit at the start of battles each allied hero steals 10 percent health from the enemy sitting opposite and uses their health to create a shield that lasts for five seconds, and then that would be increased if I, if I had hypogeans. But even though I don't have hypogeans, that's still pretty badass. Beast Claw would potentially only affect Entendre as the only agility player, agility character on the field. So let's go Demons to Seed. Okay, let's check the wagon. Do I want any of these guys? Ooh, it does have that sort of frozen energy energy guy. So let's just grab him just in case. Um, and then what I say is just in case, because in the hard, when the labyrinth is really hard and your characters are dying, getting those characters from the abandoned wagons and getting powerful ones that are interesting is the way to survive. However, this particular labyrinth hasn't been a suck fest. So we haven't had any deaths. Uh, so they may not come into play. I could always rotate them in just for kicks. Actually, let's do that. Let's try him out. Um, let's swap him for Arthur and let's see what he does. Meanwhile, who am I up against? All right. Thali is their mage. She's going to be fussing around and holding onto their health points, which is dangerous. He is a distracty one. Tiki posts around the, around the brag. He's going to run across again. And then Moriel is going to put her purple planet on the far side and it's going to suck energy uh, from everybody near it. So I can't do anything position wise against her. Melusina will probably hold out best against the poison arrows. Brutus against Scrag is probably best. So let's, let's try this. Let's try this formation. All right. Brutus is holding Scrag in place. Ooh, Ains is about to pop. Uh, he didn't, oh, he did get the little sorcerer guy. So that just leaves Thali up at the top, uh, for everybody to pounce on. Tarnos down for the count. What killed Tarnos? Okay. So I've got to say that was my first time playing with Tarnos. Tarnos was not particularly impressive. Look at that. He just immediately went down when the one character, the one villain still on the board was under attack. No, that was not useful. Okay, what have we got? Choose a relic. Rage Spike. Increases your hero's attack ratings by 5% for every battle they win and can be stacked by up to a total of 40%. So that's pretty cool. The Yggdrasil Banch is recovery of health. That one popped earlier as an option. 
The frozen star is able to save heroes that are mortally wounded in battle, but you only get to use it once. It just pops back whoever died um, uh, in the battle at once. So let's let's go with the rage spike. That seems most offensive versus defensive. Okay, success. We have cleared the second floor of the arcane labyrinth, and we now find ourselves at the crossroads of the easy mode of the labyrinth is purple, or the hard mode of labyrinth the red. Um, I don't love the hard mode of the labyrinth anymore. I often, the labyrinth pops up every two days. I rarely play it except on Sundays. So not even going to go for the hard level. Um, with the mystic, I could reclaim Tarnos, the guy that just died, but he was so useless. I just don't see the point. So I'm just going to blaze through the fountain of vitality just for fun. Even though almost everybody was at top health, now they are totally at top health. And then we'll stay in the middle horns. Let's see who we got. All right. Let's put Arthur back in play. Uh, position wise, we're probably good. The only interesting thing that might happen movement wise is Nara here grappling either Brutus or. Because she's in the front line, she might grab somebody else. In this situation, what do you do? So that, and now Brutus and Arthur are just double teaming her. So she hasn't actually had a chance to grapple anybody. Which, I mean, that's great for me, but I was curious um, what would happen if I were to play Nara in the front line, who she grabs. See, I think my team's just going to murder her. Which, again, that's the point of the game. Success, CA team. I'm really noticing a difference or a possible difference. Because again, I'm thinking the, 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 the labyrinth might be one of the easier labyrinth variations. But um, I also have a beast in play. Actually, we'll come back to the beast com concept later, but let's choose a relic first. Light bearers, loyalty, moot point, not playing any light bearers. Demon's bite. When an enemy hero dies, allied hypogean heroes will... I'm not playing any Hypogene heroes, so you're out, which leaves us with Hellspawn Head. 10% defense and 10% life leech to allies fighting within the enemy half of the battlefield. Cool, let's do it. Now, let's just go to the Fountain of Vitality. Use. Let's see who's in the strong battle because we might want to risk it. Just to power up. Oh, it does have a really strong Lucretia. Actually, Lucretia is Zaphiel's uh, wife in the mythology, the one who where things went so poorly. Let's let's just play Lucretia just for the fuck of it. Uh, so here we go. And before I set this emotion, so up here I have this little beast guy in play, and this is only my second time doing the labyrinth with that up there. I did not know that's what the beasts were for until somebody hopped in the channel the other day called Madara, who awesomely was like, "No, no, put the white." the white ball beast up there and they're doing a health buffer, I think, which has been useful and maybe part of why I'm deceptively thinking the labyrinth is, is one of the like not easier ones, but not crazy. All right. Meanwhile, so here's Lucretia. She's a ranger. Um, she's going to go after essentially whoever is the strongest person and follow them around the board. And she gets stronger as all of her people die. So it's usually best to try to get rid of her early if you can. Um, I'll leave her, you know, I'm going to move Ains incredibly likely, though she may well go after Entendre. Um, meanwhile, but we'll see. All right. Entendre just ran away from, well, she didn't really run away. Entendre just roams the board, basically. Um, yeah, okay, she is tar She is targeting Entendre, which, to be honest, I would much rather have her target Entendre than Ains because look at Ains down there was getting targeted by somebody because his health is low. And so is Entendre. So Lucretia was very... Labyrinth. This is the longest loading screen ever. There we go. Victory... What are our relic choices? 
the Goblet of Research all critical rating plus fifteen percent. Ooh, um, let's do that one. Some of my heroes are in low health right now, but hopefully that will not be permanent. Okay, but now we're in danger because Antandra and Ains took a massive beating in that red battle. So I'm going to go there. I want to. Okay, well, let's, let's see if they don't get killed right away. They have a chance to recoup their health. And I can always do the evil, evil trick of pausing the game, exiting it, and then preserving my characters um, if they do die because I don't want to have to revive them later. Oh, Entendre, you're so close. Ains, can you kill them before they kill Entendre? Or sub her out. But again, those are my two strongest. So without them, there's a, a higher likelihood that my characters, their other characters, won't be able to survive as readily. Okay. All are potentially useful. Heroes Hope increases attack and defense ratings, but only on the third hard mode of the labyrinth. So we're not on that, and we're not... There's, we're literally on the third regular level, so it's not going to happen. Cape of Dexterity, allied ranger heroes deal 10% damage. Not that useful. I don't really have a lot of, I don't think I have any rangers on there. Oh, but this one, call to arms. At the beginning of the battle, your side is their energy replenished by six points. For Ains, that is especially exciting. Higher, higher one. Or we have the choice of a bit more of a grab bag, some slight light bearer favoritism. Let's give this one a go, uh, but let's move Ains out. We're going to keep our eyes on Entendre because her health is crazy, crazy low right now. And that is a large end. Playing is the only way I have of getting her health up because she gets a slight boost when we start the battle and then continues to get a little bit as she plays. So we'll see. Ains went on in his little medicinal cart and... um. The guy with the gold mask and the, the white cape. They're doing some strong buffers. Ains is going to blow again. Just great. Entendre's health, meanwhile. Fully locked. You knock out Rowan. You've got this. Yes. Success. Success, team. So proud of you. Ooh, okay. All purples. The Ages of Preservation again. That's that shield for three seconds but only once uh, somebody's used their ultimate AOE. Idol of Hassening increased haste when there are no enemies within the allied half of the battlefield, which is a rare scenario, actually. The, the Diligent Vow restores the weakest teammates' HP by 30%. Uh, if, I, if Entendre hadn't bounced back in that last battle, this would probably be the winner, but since she did, let's and since the energy points are big enough, are... are high enough that everyone's popping pretty come on oh but that's literally my only choice so we'll just grab someone loading screen what are you doing okay there we go at least it's the loading screen in the game and not the Twitch stream and dangerous uh, uh, light bearers and rain with her pink hair and her ability to, she can be dangerous. All right. Gwyneth is going to be a range and shoot across. So I don't want to be having pieces. As Trilda is going to move across the battlefield, Peggy's soldiers are going to move across. If Melisina can hold place, that would be useful. Entendre's going to roam. Meanwhile, Brutus is going to stay pretty stationary and can protect Ains. Rain's going to stay in place. So that just leaves Sora. Okay, so Sora's in the front. That, that sounds okay. Let's give it a go. See what's going on. If this works. Okay, Melisina's holding Estrilda. You can see her, her claw out in action. Entendre's health is low. Which again, scares me when that happens. Ains, Ains for the win. Knocking at the final three with one blast. 
oh, so powerful. Versus of accuracy. Uh, accuracy plus 50%, critical rating plus 10%. No, actually, you know, let's stop and look up Van Brunces. What does the word Van Brunce mean? Van Brunce. What does the word Van Brunce mean? Oh, it's the, oh, that, oh, it's literally that little picture of the arm cuff of the, uh, it's the tubular or gutter defenses of the forearm worn as part of a suit of plate of armor, often connected to the gauntlets. Interesting. Okay. So they straight up get that picture of the cuff. The, the cuff is actually a vambrous. That's okay. That makes sense, I guess. Um, Idol of Savagery heroes that have... Excuse me, Yon. That have more than 90% of health at the beginning of a battle. Attack ratings increased by 20%. Um, mine are... Their health is variable right now, so that might not be for me. Carnal Grip restores 24% of an allied's hero's HP if they slay an enemy. That actually sounds kind of fabulous, so let's do that one. Fountain of Vitality. Let's go. All right, here we go. The final boss battle of the Labyrinth and the last battle of the stream, I think. Let's see what we got. Okay, so Lorsan is going to do his energy threads. Elward is going to shield everybody, but also kill people. Can. So let's move. Is kind of shooting out of that beer barrel that he and uh, Brutus can hopefully be up against Lore Sun's like immediate attention. He may still be one of the ones that gets the energy thread, but hopefully the positioning will keep him less likely to. All right. One of my relics has those shields that have popped around my guys. Ains knocked off his energy AoE really quickly. Antandra is going to do a flurry in a second as her energy a, like blasts pop. Um, nice on taking out Lorson. Rigby is still holding on in the front line, though, though not for long. Well done, team. Well done. All right. Victory in the Labyrinth. Let's collect our final treasures. Fabulous. Let's see if that added up to any more people cards. It looks like it did. Ah, just a no. What do we get? I'm a, uh, Angelo. Something in the quest popped. Ah, okay. Defeat the boss in the arcane labyrinth. Cool. We got a treasure just for that. Thank you for those. Oh no, that was another people card. So much admin. Just collect that. What have we got? One of the centaurs. Cool. Something also popped in the merchants. So we're getting another reward for, oh, okay. We progressed through this. Getting 95 more engraving stones. And meanwhile, actually, that gave us 3,000 diamonds, which means we can close this out with one more summoning for hero cards, people cards. Here we go. Fingers crossed for some purples. Zero purples. But five blue fodder cards. So at least there's that. Oh, wait, what do we again another quest popped? And a treasure chest. Thank you. Oh, purple. Did that get us another purple? No. All right. So thus concludes. The excitement of Sunday's massive uh, AFK extravaganza. Uh, thank you guys for listening. And um, I'm going to grab some lunch, maybe take a quick nap, and I'll be uh, back online in a little bit. Catch you guys later and have a fabulous, fabulous day in the meantime. <laughs>